1986, the Genesis. The Center for Human Rights was founded in 1986 as part of domestic efforts against the apartheid regime. Its vision of an equal South Africa, free from oppression and discrimination, drew criticism from some members of the public and attracted the wrath of the government. Established to foster human rights education and awareness, the center in its early years participated in meetings with the liberation movements outside the borders of South Africa and was an integral part of the drafting process of both the interim and the final constitution of South Africa. Yeah, so the centre has been around for, for 30 years. Um, I think it started from a humble beginning. As far as I know, uh, it was in a parking lot. Uh, the registrar and Johan van der Westhuizen had a discussion and said they had to do something about what was happening in the country. This was the time of the state of emergency, the time of apartheid, and in a way the centre responded uh, to that. Um, and I think that's the underlying idea also that we have with the Mood Court and with our other projects is from human wrongs to human rights. So we look at what is wrong and then we try to solve a particular problem. It's not some abstract notion or some idea that one found somewhere that you then try to apply, but it's a real problem and you try to find a solution to that. It's inside this building here that the first conference that really launched the centre was held in 1986. The uh, famous poster of the Justitia shows it was this conference where new solutions, jurisprudential solutions were sought and um, interrogated. And that kind of launched the centre's first phase where it was uh, looking at solutions for the South African predicament and really created the, the, the legitimacy that the centre really clings and, and really also depends on so much today. We started in the Department of Legal History where the centre was born under the leadership of Johan van der Westhuizen. From there we have grown, still growing so much so that we are now running out of office space. I have many fond memories, too many to relate in a short space of time. And if there were any not so fun memories, I must have deleted them because I have none. On my first day at work, uh, I walked into the office of the director at the time and uh, he said hello. And uh, after welcoming me and asking me how my journey was, he presented me with this file. And then he said bye. Right? And that's how uh, my briefing started. I went and I opened it up and I got um, the history of the project that I was working on at the time, which was the African Human Rights Moot Court competition, and I learned to swim. I soon found out that uh, the pace uh, at which things worked at the Center for Human Rights was rather frenetic. In fact, on that first day at work, I uh, was locked in the building. Uh, trying to catch up with my file, I didn't realize that the doors were locked at 10 p.m. And so at about 11 o'clock, I realized that I couldn't exit the building and not knowing who to call, I called the police, right? And the police came and let me out of the building. Since then, that piece has continued. But so has my passion for the work that we are doing. Um, we have crossed uh, hills and valleys, we've traveled the continent and even the world. Uh, and we've tried to do some, uh, a few good things. And one of the very first major jobs for myself at the centre was to organise a conference on de facto discrimination, which was in 1992. And as you can imagine, in 1992 there was no email, there was no Google, there was no internet, there was no cell phones, no WhatsApp, nothing. The only form of communication was telephones and fax machines. So communicating, particularly in Africa, was extremely difficult and very challenging. And we organized an international conference with members from all over the world, um, just via fax and, and telephone, which today is quite hard to believe because you can't understand that there's no instant communication. And 
some of the very old posters that you can see in my office. One of them is about the de facto discrimination uh, conference, which took place in 1992, and that was one of my first major jobs. I have many wonderful memories of the centre. I could keep you going for an hour, but those are the those are some of the ones that really stand out for me. And for the rest, I've just always felt like it's, I'm part of a big family, and that's how it is at the centre. 1992. Zimbabwe played host to the first ever African Human Rights Moot Court competition organized by the Center in September 1992. The immense success of the African Moot Court competition has been replicated in no less than three other global and Africa-wide competitions organized by the Center. Now the joke is told of how the Center wants to solve the world's problems through moot court competitions. So the, the, the second phase, I think, of the center comes in the 90s, you know, it is the winds of democratic change blows across the African continent and the center then also starts to position itself more towards a broader African focus. So having kind of been so centered on South Africa, we broadened the work of the center starting with the African first the South, uh, Southern Africa, the African Human Rights Moot Court competition and really directing our projects and our ambitions to a more pan-African um, audience and um, objective. This is the seventh anniversary of the Moot Court competition. The Human Rights Moot Court has really grown over the seven years in quality, in prestige, and in, in, in general recognition. At one of the moot competitions, I think it was in Ghana, uh, one of our assistants, Prince Mbetsi, um, went with to this competition. And it was the first time that he's ever seen a moot competition uh, as well. And he said uh, in the morning, he, he told me how great this was. He said he saw people arguing for the applicant with tears in their eyes. And he said that showed how passionate they were and then later in that day he said to me well now he's uh, he's starting to be a bit confused because he saw also the same team arguing for the respondent with tears in their eyes in that afternoon and of course that is exactly what a moot is about uh, the idea is that you see both sides the same problem from from both sides and that you are able to put out the best argument possibly for the applicant as well as for the respondent and uh, that, that is exactly what Prince, I think, experienced there. Access to health expertise comes without any form of discrimination. And the Central Provincial Guidelines Expertise discriminates broad for all terminally ill individuals. So the root court, um, I think, over the years has developed into a tool which uh, uh, people say revolutionized uh, legal education uh, on the continent. When we started with the first moot competition, which was in 92, um, very few, if any, universities had human rights as a subject. Um, but increasingly then, uh, universities, by participating in the moot, I think felt um, that they, this, there's a need to present human rights courses on campus, um, and they were strengthening each other. So I think in a way, uh, of course, many other things played a role as well, but the moot, I think, contribute towards human rights becoming um, a subject that you can study in most universities as part of the, the legal curriculum in Africa. 2000. Human rights education is a core component of the center's work. In the year 2000, the LLM in Human Rights and Democratization in Africa became the flagship master's program of the center. Somewhere in the middle of my time at the Center for Human Rights, we were awarded this UNESCO Prize for Human Rights Education. So it was really special in itself. Um, but the thing that stays with me, and I think one of the most important um, reasons why we were given this award, is that it recognized the fact that the Center does not operate in isolation that we have a set of partners in various concentric circles, depending on how big or small the program is, but a legion of human rights activists and professionals of institutions, uh, universities, all across the continent, 
without whom we would simply not be able to do the things that we do. But as much as we talk about the center being buildings and uh, you know we look at these locations, ultimately the center is people, right? So the center is all the staff over the years that have contributed to the work of the center. And the center essentially is this network of alumni, of graduates that have graduated in particular from our Human Rights Democratization program, but all the other programs as well. From moot court competitions to advanced human rights courses, degree programs, journal publications, and cutting edge projects, the center keeps providing dynamic solutions to address the ever-changing landscape of human rights advocacy. Do not underestimate the power of a small beginning. And, and that stays with me. They met in the parking lot and the center grew from that. Uh, with the master's program, it started with air sickness bags and writing on that. And it's now an institution. It's now really a movement. Um, and I think in so many ways, with many things in the center, they start small. And that's, that's so important. It's, I often think people want to start with the whole solution right at the beginning. It doesn't work that way. It's probably not wise to do it. It's organically that it has to grow. And the center to me has always been uh, an organism um, that needs attention, it needs nurturing, it needs individuals, it needs energy, it needs struggle. Um, but that's the good part, is you invest in it and then it's multiplied by that, uh, uh, by that organism. Despite the fact that we are confronted with some of the worst human rights violations on the continent, we advance still and continue to draw inspiration from the courage of the center's three directors who have been unafraid to speak out against injustice and inequality, even when it was not fashionable to do so. I'd like to commend the Center for Human Rights on being a forerunner in the field of human rights education and its strategic work across Africa and other regions for the past 30 years. And I do know that they'll be doing many of the same for many more years to come. Wherever the Center goes in the next 30 years, it can only build on the commitment and sacrifice of those who have been a part of its story since its inception in 1986.